in the arena tonight. If you put lightning, luxury, and love in the bottle, then shake it up. More than likely, Imani Van Zepp would pop out fan and toe. <laughs> Seemingly dropped to earth by the angels themselves, Imani began her emergence as the result of 25 years of entertainment industry experience through her nephew, Eric Dillard, who Imani credits as her creator, producer, and manager. Seeing that people's hearts were growing more weary with each social and global tragedy, Imani felt in her soul that love still mattered and needed the chance to be rediscovered. From her humble beginnings on Instagram in 2018, she was determined to put light and love into the world. With nothing more than a cheap blouse, dollar store jewelry, and unfortunate makeup done by her nephew, her familiar and familial comedic style sparked an immediate audience as she covered pop culture's hot topics with thought providing her spicy, sassy commentary. And through keen social knowledge, precise comedic timing, and heartfelt compassion, Imani was coined as the voice of the people. She established an unshakable trust with her audience, myself included, so much so that people evolved from calling her Imani to Auntie, myself included. <laughs> Joining me in the arena right now, the singular sensation, the world's Auntie, Imani Van Zapp. Welcome, Auntie. Welcome, welcome. Yes, with the fan. This is not the first thing you're going to hear. The first thing you're going to hear. Who are you talking about in that intro? You're not talking about me. Oh, you yes, about I, some, other, some other person that came to save the world. I flat know you're talking about with full throat. I'm talking about you, Imani. You came oh. into my... I feel like you've been my auntie forever, but you came into wow. my life over the holiday season as mm. I was home re trying to rebuild, reimagine, recuperate mm -hmm. from a 2023 that was full of highs, but also full of abyss lows. And yeah. I went on to minding my own black business, went on to the social media pages and saw this. First of all, it was the hair and the face and just the presence. And I was like, what is this magic? And then you began talking in a way that may auntie make sense. It is homespun, but as if you have a, a, a PhD in psychology, but it is set with love and it is, you know, honey makes the truth go down better. And, and that's what you, and I may have watched hundreds, probably near a thousand. And, and just, I, and I think I commented on something. It may have been my God today. And you responded back and you could feel the love just from the page. And I was like, oh, this is someone you want to know. And, and I was wow. just thankful for what you gave to me personally. But then yeah. as I was there, a former colleague who is now in, Oh, Arizona. She got uh -huh. on and went, oh my God, I love her. And her daughter's in the Tina um, national tour. She's like, I was telling wow. my daughter, she's got the, and I'm like, this is when you know something is powerful. And then here, you just met Bianca Williams from our team, yeah. who when I uh -huh. mentioned last week you were gonna be on, she squealed, we squealed together. And she's like, you gotta let me come over and say hello. So I wanna just begin with, thank you for that, but it is so great to be a part of this community um, yeah. of love that you're creating, um, but to receive it. So if no one ever tells you this again, what you gave me to help me reset um, and to reposition so that I can become um, what I plan to be. So that's all I got to say. Now let me, let me, let's begin at the beginning or as it might be for Imani Van Zapp who just fell into the earth from the heavens. I wow. usually ask folks, my first question is usually when and where were you born? But I think for you, it's gonna be when and where were you created? Ooh, oh wow. Come okay. on. I already know what I'm doing with tip Take top interviews. I'm ready for Oh, we're doing it. Oh, I'm ready. Been, let's listen. go, let's go. Come on. <laughs> yes, man. Oh, I, man. <laughs> I would say, if I'm being honest, mm -hmm. about 2013. 2013 was when nephew, you'll, you'll hopefully you get to interview or talk to nephew at some point too. So my my nephew mm -hmm. um, was really struggling with art, life, trying to figure out, this is something that, art is something that I really wanna do, but there was no medium 
you know, as far as like just trying to just go and be an actor out there on the circuit, you know, having to do wait, waitering and then, you know, you got to act at night and then work in an insurance company during the day. Come on. It was a, a matter of faith and uh, which is what Imani means in Swahili, by the way. Your fun mm. fact. And um, it was a it was a point of just saying, what am I going to use to put out into the world? And that's where I really believe that the essence of Imani came from. Now, she may have not materialized mm -hmm. until years okay. later, but the, the truth of what was being born in that vessel was starting probably about 2013. My goodness. And yeah. I want to talk about, because I adore Eric, nephew Eric as well. Nephew Eric oh, is, he's got he's his own so, he, I know, and I know he's over there. Hey, nephew. Um, hey, nephew, we'll, we'll get to you in a minute. It's my we'll, time we'll get to, Right, okay. right I know, you better keep the focus. You better needy <laughs> Nash bet your way through this interview. Did you see her <laughs> last night at the Emmys? She stopped on stage and said, I want to thank somebody, myself. Myself. Okay. I loved it. Everything about it. Every, I love the love to. between her and her wife. I yes. love they all. But back to you, where we need to be centered. Um, <laughs> tell me about, because they're related to you through Eric's okay. creation of you. Tell mm. me about Eric's mom and dad. Hmm. Tell me about the people who raised him. They are what would typically be seen as just your your average Midwestern couple, but um, people of magic. I don't hmm. even think that they realize how much magic they have um, or how much magic they are responsible for making through their love. Hmm. And they are just people that really can see the future. I would say people that were born and live way before their time very transcending spirits themselves. Hmm. Um, mom being from, well, both of them actually being from West Virginia and um, Pop moving to Columbus when he was a teenager, I think about 18 or 19 years old. Um, mom came to Columbus, they went to a church convention and then from there, the family started. And their, their support, their love, their um, reassurance that you can do anything you wanna do hmm. in this world watching nephew <laughs> stand in front of this faithfully standing in front of that TV at seven o'clock on a, either weeknights or on Thursdays imitating Vanna White. So you can start now it's probably starting to make a little sense why there's so much demonstration it, and uh, yeah, presentation with the does. platform. Yeah. Um would walk around in his pops a uh, big work shirt, you know, at the time he was like maybe seven or eight years old. And to not have um in that case a black family that judges you for being unique, judging you for being different, for being queer. They they just knew how to just embrace it. And even if their personal convictions were in a different direction, you never felt like you were on a chopping block of any sort. Very, mm. very beautiful people. What a gift to, to yes. be able to grow up in that sort of love and safety. So many of us um, with melanin in our skin because of, it, it, we, and we could spend hours on this, um, because of the church, because of respectability Listen. politics, baby, um, and the work we have to do. So, you know, I grew up in the home as well. My um, oldest sibling is trans, um, mm. and um, my mom um, is one of the staunchest allies. I mean, to the fact, to the to the point where this eighty-year-old woman will fight you. And I want her, and I, and I love her for it, but I'm like, lady, yeah. lady. Um, so lady. when I, when I, <laughs> lady, lady, or as she likes to be Sit called sometimes, down, Sit down, listen, Sit or as she likes to be called sometimes, Imani, you'll get this princess. Um, that ain't my business. But, but I, I, so there were a few times when you, um, you and that fan, the, the, re <laughs> the relationship between you and the love fan, the, the love way that the, this one or, the, or more more appropriately the become oh. fan. There we go. There we go. And, and listen, the right one. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you what I might have to do. I have I I I, I won't because I'm not pushing a product, but I I have a T-shirt, three of she them did. actually that says yes, become. And I feel like I'm going to need a fan for the summer. Yeah, you to are. Just make I'm going to sure. send that one on the house. Don't worry about it. I'm going to send it to you next week. <laughs> okay. So let me, uh, there were a few, there were many, but there were a few of your talks that mm. resonated with me. Okay. Um, and one most recently was 
don't start the clock. Do not start the clock until you're sure. Okay, here we go. So there's a term that we have come up with to describe what it feels like when you make the choice that you want to start falling in love with somebody. Ooh. 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 Because I'm, oh, oh, talk to, talk to me and our viewers because I need to keep listening. Because clearly, okay. even at 55, I'm still working on that. I'd be starting multiple still clocks. Be coming. But it's still becoming. I love that. Yes. But but tell us, tell us what you share with with your viewers um, and, and and your fans uh, and your family on social media. Talk to me and our viewers about starting that clock and why it's important to be careful when Ooh. you start it. Oh goodness, I I was talking to a friend and um, you know we were talking about relationships and different things like that. And one of the things that they shared was that well you know. Um, you can't control what your heart does. You just, you know, people just almost making it, I know they didn't intend this, but almost in some way without their knowing, making it seem like you don't have control over your feelings or you don't have control over the romance that you hope for. You don't have control over the long walks on the beach and the mm -hmm. dinners at night and the, mm -mm -mm, the whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't have control over it and the people can just come into your life and can just ravish your soul you know, when you want to be in love so bad. And so I, I you know, I pondered things like this and the term came to me, it's, it's almost like you're starting a clock mm -hmm. because then it takes time to get over that person when they go away. And why don't we, no, you can't control, every, you can't, as I like to say, you can't control your next page. You can only mm -hmm. write the one that you're on. But I can make decisions today to make that next page better, can't I? Ooh. Can I can I do something to ensure that the next page mm. has a better outcome mm. and not just explosions everywhere? So what can I do? And even though it's not an absolute, the term that I came up with is starting the clock. And you can meet as many people as you want to. Meet meet different ones, go on different dates, you know, see what you like about this one, what you don't like about that one. Or as you called it, and window you, shop. Uh, window shop. When, you don't have to buy everything that you look at and you can admire things. You can admire things, you can not like things. And you can you try can things on. You can imagine things, yeah. You can really have a good time mm. just kind of assembling your own wardrobe, if you will. So mm. why not assemble the wardrobe of your soul, uh, assemble the wardrobe mm. of your heart? Mm. And when you start the clock, that's when you say that this person is worthy of my time. Mm. Ah. Who, just because you meet someone and, they, and you call it a good vibe, that doesn't mean that they're worthy of your time. Mm. Because you want to spend time thinking about And them. once you start the Literally. clock, everything matters more. It matters too it's much. Not if you're not everything ready. from a text My God. to, a, um, to a, a, what time they, they showed up or mm. when they called you, what, what they said, you know, mm. over ice cream. Everything mm. that this person does is going to matter. And it's, it's okay to take the chance of love, but why not take a good chance? Mm. There are good risks and bad risks. Take Ooh. a good risk. Love is a risk no matter what you Always. do. Always, yeah. You know, they, not to sound morbid, they could get hit by a bus tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. It's gone. <laughs> Give us the truth. Give it to us in a loving way. I'm just going to be honest with it. You know, we can't because we can't control the next page. Absolutely. But if we can control the page that we're on, start the clock when you're ready. Say that you're and, and the clock doesn't mean that there is like a, a stop point. I don't mean that. But just if you want to spend the rest of your life mm -hmm. with this person, then let's start that time with the right one. Mm. So that, that relationship has good memories. Mm. It has it has a good feeling. It has a good overall aura. You don't have to always be at a risk or a deficit mm. when it's time for love. And Imani, I think that is one of the things you do so incredibly well. Uh, it's visual. You can. It mm, it's mm. like it, 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 I'm I'm going to do a comparison, but follow me on this. Okay. It's like Marianne Williamson pre-running for office. It was practical, because I lived in Michigan at the time, and she had a church mm. in, in, a, in a suburb. It was practical okay. religion. Okay. Um, and I've had issues. My faith is deep. You can't fight me on it. You can't Period. fight me on my faith or my beauty. Those two things, the absolutes. Don't, don't, do not don't do it. I'll my, fight you. I'll, okay, I'll come on, family. Me. That's family. But <laughs> I remember it. It, it was, pra <laughs> thank you, but it was practical religion. And that's what I think you give so very well. It's, I can close mm -hmm. my eyes. Starting the clock, it checks me. It's almost, 
it's almost like that rubber band when you're trying to stop like smoking. Like, yeah. yeah, are you starting? To, so it's visual. Um, mm -hmm. we, you also, I was just about to say we did, because I listened to you and I feel like I'm in the conversation, but you also had a few conversations because I think there is a misunderstanding of what a Judas in your midst is. Can you, remi can you remind me and share with our viewers how we confuse Judas's for, for monsters that, that are visually clear to us? Okay, I what and a lot of and I want to say I, I don't I don't have a PhD I don't ever want to push that but I do feel I have a PhD in experience I've been through a lot of things mm -hmm. and with those things what which adds to I guess what people would say the the wisdom of auntie and all yeah. that um, I have had a different take on things when it comes to Judas I'll give you another visual remember the seeing eye pictures where you're looking at dolphins. You know, just a, a, an array of dolphins. And then when you let your eyes settle, then you see the shark. What we come to mm. find out in terms of Judas, a lot of what you see is beautiful. Mm. A lot of what you're experiencing, a lot of your recollection mm. of your time with this person and the the memories that you've made with them and mm. the times, the late night talks and the late night, you know, let's order some pizza real quick, mm. are gonna feel so loving. We have painted Judas to be just this ugly, ugly, ugly person. I'm not saying that Judas can't do ugly things, clearly, because you wouldn't call them Judas if not. But Judas means something to you. Mm. Judas is a friend. Judas is someone that you told your deepest, darkest secrets to. Judas is on the front row sometimes. Yeah. Oh, goodness. They're, they're very front row. They're very green room. They're very, you know, mm. they're 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 there to, to see the if they, you need help in the bathroom. They're there for <laughs> all of those moments. Yes. Yeah. All those moments. And then what will happen in most cases or, or, or cases that I've seen or in experience, there's going to come a time where something is going to work for their favor. It's not even so much that they're trying to betray you. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. But the one time, the, the times that seem to hurt the most are the times where they were just living their own life. Hmm. They did some things that worked out for them. It may have not been with any aim towards you, may have not been, mm -hmm. maybe it was. But the, the, the betrayals that I see to be the deepest are when they were just living their life and they had no um, empathetic view of what their decision was going to hmm. mean for you. Ooh. That is Judas, because they're going to kiss you. They're mm. going to betray you with a kiss. Ooh. They're going to betray you with affection. Mm. They're going to betray you with love. They're going to betray you with their arm is wrapped around you so tightly. And you're and it's going to matter to you. That last hug or whatever mm. that, that encounter may be will feel like an eternity. Because when you pull away from this, has happened to me before, where I've pulled out of an embrace with my Judas. And then when you see who they really are, when they pull back, mm. They went in looking like an angel and came out looking like a demon. And you're like, what happened? What happened? It wasn't in the twinkling of an eye. Mm. And so I try to people to be aware of what that is. And that just because you encountered your Judas, it doesn't have to alter who you are. Mm. How it do you keep it from altering who you are? Ahead, How do we keep it from altering? Auntie, give me some advice. How do, <laughs> how, you know, how do, what advice would you give to us who have lived life, we, 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 we step in with empathy, and it feels like sometimes we are just the world's punching bag. How do we mm. push through that and not become hurt people who hurt people? Mm. This is, oh God, this, I'm gonna tell you, this is one of my best interviews, the best interview. Come on, <laughs> what, okay. I want to please invite me when you tell everyone else, but this this one here, you got big shoes to fill, because I, I am like, you're going into my heart space now. Oh. Um, you get to a point where you have to realize you are the prize. And I know that we say that. I know it's, it's a nice, you know, buzz phrase mm -hmm. and all that kind of, I know you love yourself. I, yeah. I, I get it. But why should I love myself? Mm. I should like, like, like Nisi Nash said, I'm the one who knows. No one knows like me yes. when I didn't have food to eat. No mm. one knows like me mm. when I didn't have anybody to call on. Come on. Nobody knows like me when I stayed up late at night and couldn't sleep. 
I was the, the vessel. I was the body mm. that had to cry those tears. I was the one mm. that had to live there and figure it out. I was the one that had to rewire my brain. No one else did that for me, but me. And, and so we, and then we encounter people that we really need to let just be themselves. The reason why it hurts mm -hmm. is because we look at that person and we say, but if I were in your shoes, I wouldn't treat me like this. Oh, come on. That's why it hurts. It hurts because you're trying to write their next page for them. Mm. That's not your job. Mm. That's not my job. My job is never to, to narrate someone else's story. Ooh. I narrate my own. Mm. And when you narrate your own, you can tell yourself whatever story you want to. To the star of your tell own story. Tell whatever story you yeah. want to. I, I've said it before, and I know you probably heard it. When when nephew, and, and, and me too, shoot. When nephew walks down the street and, and a car <laughs> horn beeps, assume they're beeping at you because you're so fine. If someone takes a double glance at you, assume that they want it and, and you can't have it. You are allowed to write your own story. If hmm. someone ghosts you, and if someone, or they don't know how to communicate with you, they can handle it. Mm. They weren't ready for all this. And that's all right. Pick yourself up. Don't ever look at yourself mm. as having been offended or hurt or targeted. Mm. I'm not saying those things don't happen. Absolutely. But don't, don't land on those verbs. Mm. Be, don't live listen. there. Yeah, don't live there. It happened, but it happened according to their story. According to my story, I'm a gem. They weren't ready for me. Always uh, lift yourself up. Okay. I knew. Oh, I knew it. We are at the end of the segment. We got another one to come. Our final segment, our final segment okay. called Three for the Road. My God, today. I don't want it to end. I knew this was going to be good. I, oh my, I don't want it to end, but I, uh, on I can talk another hour with you. Oh, oh, we're, oh, this is, I can say this to you right now. I, I can say this with a certainty. This is the first of many conversations, if you will have us, that we are going to be having together. In times oh, such as these, we have to, this, this in times everything. such as these, this is powerful, it's important, and we must platform as many voices and energies mm. like yours as we possibly can. I'm okay. going to ask you to stay with us, and I'm going to thank you, Chicago, for sticking around and ask you to return right after the break for our final segment, Three for the Road. We'll be right back. Right. On the next Chicago Newsroom 2.0, we'll take another look at the continuing migrant crisis with reporter for the Austin Weekly News, Francia Garcia Hernandez, and three questions with host, Hugo Balta. I think the narrative needs to change quickly from a negative to a positive. Join the conversation Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Can TV Cable Channel 19 or stream live on CanTV.org or on the new Can TV Plus app. Experience the power of community television. Auntie, Auntie Imani Van Zapp, it has been such a thrill. Um, you are everything that you have been on your social media platforms that I follow ferociously. Um, and I love to meet people and they are exactly who they say they are. Because when words and actions don't match up, I'm watching actions. Um, but my, my friend, thank you for this. Our final thank segment, oh, our mm. final segment is called Three for the Road. Now listen, I usually give a warning to folks. We have folks here who are well known and well worth knowing. I'm not even gonna waste my time because I can't imagine the question I toss at you that would trip you up. Um, so let's begin, shall we begin? Shall we? All right. We shall. Let's do. Question number one. If you could have dinner with any person, living or deceased, who would you choose and why? I know this is going to sound cliche. Beyonce. Oh. I know, I know this. And I'm, I don't think that we understand for the level of creativity that she mm. gives. I don't think we understand how much she is internally pain to be able to put that out. Agree. I know we want to write it off quick. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. No. 
I know that spirit. I know it very well. And I know what that body must feel like to have to be able to put out that type of art. And just, you know, I, she just, she's someone that I know people love her for the Beyonce S yeah. that she gives us, but I know what it's like to be that type of vessel. Mm. Or at least I'm experiencing, I, I should say I'm, I'm experiencing early stages of what I think she went through. Mm. And, um, and I'm admired, I, I admire her because of that. I love that. Great first answer. Question two, do you have any regrets? That nephew didn't bring me out sooner. If nephew would have brought me out sooner, we may have not got number 45. <laughs> as soon as nephew felt that back in 2013, that should have been the first thing. We should have got you it started. Right he should have pulled he me down. He was doing something late. <laughs> he should have snatched me out of the heavens. <laughs> that is the old, you know I was what? up there waiting, ready to go, and he waited until five years Baby. later? What are you doing? Oh, because you came ready. Um, right. So here's my final question, and you may have just answered it. Um, what advice would present day Imani had given 19 year old nephew Eric? Mm, Imani's advice to beautiful. Eric. That, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And also because that's when the production company started. That was the year it started, when he was 19. Mm. Um, do it afraid. Mm. Do it afraid. Mm. Do it afraid. Hmm. I am actually in some ways surprised at where things have gotten to today, considering how much fear hmm. paralyzes a person. My God. You know, to putting something off another week or another mm -hmm. month or another mm -hmm. year or mm -hmm. another decade or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Really look at fear as the uncertainty of a roller coaster. Hmm. The reason why roller coasters are fun, I, I think it was um, Tank and the, bang and the Bangers, mm. it was talking about roller coasters. And she talks about what is it about the thrill of a roller coaster where we want to be to the point of almost don't want to, you know, where you just, yes. <laughs> we do that to ourselves. And it is because the, the human in the human, in, in the human experience, the body wants thrill. That's mm. why we want to be in love. That's mm. why we want to go move to another city. Mm. That's why we want to try different food. What, so it doesn't, it shouldn't matter when it comes to mm. our daily living and our, and our movements. We don't know what the next page mm. is, and that is what we actually love. Mm. But if you let the awareness of that next page cripple you, mm. you never know what your story is. Shifting the perspective. Your story, yeah, your story can be infinitely better if you go into the next mm. moment, if it brings tears, mm. if it brings trembling, if it brings, mm. you know, I'm starting you looking around, I don't know where it's going to come from, mm. go into it. Now, nephew has the most beautiful relationship with his fear. Mm. Imani Van Zapp, thank you, my friend. Thank you very much for being here with us tonight. And thank you always you, have a place in my heart. You uh, are, you are, you are. Uh -oh. Can I say this? Say it. You are an honorary member of Zappy Nation officially. Come on. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you, Chicago and thank beyond. Thank you for having me. Thank this you. Been so fun. I'm going to leave you, Chicago, with a final thought for the road, courtesy of author Beverly DeAngelis. Love and kindness are never wasted. They always make a difference. They bless the one who receives them, and they bless you, the giver. Until next time, take good care of you and each other. Good night. Bye. Good bye, night. Everybody. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, wait, give me some fan. Give me the fan. Do it. Boom, 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 boom. boom. <laughs>